Hi everybody, my name is Kristen Anderson. I am a survivor, type A dissection. Uh, I dissected August 22nd, 21st, sorry, 2018. Surgery on the 22nd, uh, birthday on the 23rd, FYI. And my son's 21st birthday on the 24th. Uh, so we didn't get to Vegas uh, last August. Anyway, I am here to tell you my story. Um, I am a comedian. Um, I might look a little ragged because I had a show tonight. I'm in Denver and I'm staying with friends and I'm, I'm staying in their bedroom while she watches the news. So um, it's not professional. It's probably shaky. Uh, so I was at a gig. I live in Minneapolis, like I said, and I was at a gig in um, Summers Point, New Jersey, one night at a theater. And I was supposed to um, just do a show, get up and go home the next day. Five minutes before the show started, my daughter, my 17-year-old daughter, called me to tell me that her boyfriend had suicided. Like, like within the minutes of, like she was on the scene. She didn't see him do it, but she was on the scene. She told me that, and I felt a pop in my heart. And then I went, uh, five minutes later, my, son, my husband got on the phone and said, I, I got to get her out of here. And I obviously was freaking out. Um, and then I went on stage five minutes later to do my set. I know that sounds really crazy. It does sound really crazy. But it, I was there and it was starting and, um, you know, my act, I joke, well, you know, if we don't do our show, we don't get paid. And of course, I, you know, that's how I move through stuff is to joke around about it. Uh, so, uh, of course, now I, I say that, you know, I had a really great set. I put my whole heart into it, right? While I was on stage, my um, my jaw, you know, got really numb, and it was moving through my jaw, and I knew something was really wrong. Uh, my set was over. Um, I didn't feel good. I didn't want the shrimp they had, they had out there for us. Um, second act finished and we left and went to the gas station and got some roll aids and uh, some baby aspirin. So I took that because this whole time I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to be a bother. I don't, I really don't want to be a problem. Um, which is so ridiculous. So instilled, uh, I think as women to, you know, stay invisible. So there I was uh, not wanting to be a problem. Man, I knew something was wrong though. And Carrie wanted to drive. Oh, let's, well, let's just drive across the bridge. Isn't it pretty? Mm, no, I don't think we better go across that bridge. So I asked her uh, to just take me back to the hotel. And this whole time, you guys, I knew. I knew it, something was happening that was not... Wasn't good. Uh, went back to the hotel. I threw up. Um, I called my husband, who said to me... I, he, kind of what I was saying, he was like, well, you know what, just go to sleep, see how you feel in the morning, or try to go to sleep. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm not, this isn't going to let me go to sleep. Like That's just not what this is. We hung up, and I debated, I don't even know how long, how long it was that I, again, debated, Ugh, I don't want to bother Carrie, I hate to bug her. I really got to go somewhere, though. Never occurred to me to call 911. What? Like, why Why wouldn't it occur to me to call 911? Um, should I call her? She's got her boys over there. I don't want to be a bother. I don't want to wake anybody up. Um, I put all my stuff together because I knew I wouldn't be coming back, and I finally sent her a text and said, I need to go to the ER. Are you still awake? Uh, and so I met her outside and she looked at me from her car and said, do you need help? And I said, no, but by that time my legs were super numb and I could hardly walk. And I called to her at the van and I said, it took me 25 years of therapy to send you that text because it did. Re just, I, I'm still, I'm still not over, I'm still not over that. Like how long it took me to even ask for the help. Anyway, we went to the ER, 
and I remember um, she was sitting there with my stuff and still just go I'm fine you can go go back to your boys she's like I'm not going anywhere okay I'm gonna sit here till you get in I'm gonna call your husband the woman came to get my information for insurance and um, that's what I remember and I don't remember anything else from what I was told um, the nitrous didn't work they gave me morphine and that didn't work um, I was out or I just have no memory of it so then they tested me I don't even know what test they gave me uh, but I, the next my next memory is the ambulance and it was the sirens was going off I was driven an hour and a half from this little beach town to Penn Hospital um, and I was told by a nurse you know what two weeks later when I was awake a week later whenever she came in I was out for a week she said you were at zero you were at zero and if there had been any traffic at all you would have died like if it had happened during the day they were scrubbed and waiting for me when I when I got there um, I remember the woman in the ambulance she was really kind she had a really kind face she was really nurturing I did some PTSD work uh, a few weeks ago um, art therapy accelerated resolution therapy and um, it came up that woman's face came up again and I, I remembered um, I don't know if the word is pity I don't know if it's pity that, that she felt for me it wasn't pity it was well it might have been but it was it was a I don't think she's gonna make it look you know what I mean her face just expressed this isn't I don't uh, this isn't good and uh, I'd forgotten that I called um, I guess I called my sister <laughs> told her I was going to Bangkok to have heart surgery I don't remember that one I remember calling my husband from the ambulance and then that's uh, after that it was I was I don't remember anything else I mean hallucinations um, ridiculous hallucinations my show of course it's all on my show now um i say i tell him you know i know this is a uh, i didn't see jesus i saw matthew mcconaughey i mean it was crazy this the hallucinations that i had were crazy and i also get on stage and say listen i'm not sure about this light because i've already walked into the light once i'm not really too uh too excited about doing it again but i'm not here to do my act for you guys um so I was out for a week. Um, my sister was there. I, I She drove four hours to get there. Um, my husband got there like the next day. And my sister was like, you need to bring the kids, John. You need to get the kids here. They need to come here. Um, they were having... Um, I, obviously, I wasn't stable or... And my, my my husband, God bless him, is like, yeah, I'm not bringing the kids there, which is good because even if I hadn't made it or if I wasn't going to make it, that is not the memory that I would want them to have of their mother, you know. So anyway, uh, so I was out for a week, and um, the respiratory doctor that got me that took the tube out finally, which sorry, this is this is shaking. I'm holding it. Um, came to visit me when I was conscious to check on me. He was really great. But he sat in there, sat with me for like hours, just waiting for the right moment. He said to take it out. Um, and it was, it was tough. He said it was really hard. During this time, my husband came to see me. I have no memory of that. He does say at one point that he, he announced he was going to go get a cup of coffee. And I mouthed, and then he knew that I was going to be okay. Because that's when I knew you were going to be okay. They weren't going to give me any cup of coffee. I didn't get a cup of coffee for a while. And then when I got one, it was really bad. Anyway. 
uh, one of my best friends, he's a comedian. Uh, he and his wife are comedians. That's where I am now in Denver, Phil. Phil and Nora. Uh, Phil dropped everything and flew to be with me. Actually high-fived my husband in the airport uh, and came and sat by my side and took care of me. Uh, made sure that I kept my hands down. Do you guys remember? You know, you have to. You can't have your arms up. Um, and took notes. Uh, whatever the doctor said, whatever anybody was saying, he took notes. Called it in to my husband. Um, gave me a birthday. I was under. Um, I think I said this at the beginning. But I, I was asleep for my birthday. And so when I woke up, I said to Phil, where's John? He's like, he was here for four days. But I thought John hadn't been there yet. So Phil gave me a birthday. He gave me a ukulele that my husband had found for me. Um, and he gave me a necklace, which I don't have it on right now, but it's an anatomically correct heart, silver heart. It's really beautiful. Um, and, of course, a pen T-shirt and Phil shops. He shops. <laughs> he likes to shop. Uh, but it was really beautiful. And then when Phil had to go do a gig, he flew somebody else in. Um, I don't even know what that is. To take care of me, sorry. Uh, and uh, great comic and cartoonist, Teresa. And they didn't really know her that well. Uh, but I'd met her when I was in Denver last time. And we had a nice connection. And she dropped her life uh, and flew uh, to be with me when Phil had to leave and slept in that horrible chair in the hospital that folds out like it's the most uncomfortable thing ever and she slept on that for three days and he had gotten her hotel and she just stayed with me did the same thing made sure I didn't lift my arms made sure I didn't get out of my bed they had alarms on me I was a total flight risk um, and sat with me and talked with me and kept me company. It was beautiful. It was... And throughout all of it, um, the hardest part, it was weird, because I think when I was in the hospital, I didn't really know what had happened. I didn't understand what had happened to me. And I was so foggy from all the drugs and from being under that I... I wasn't really even asking. Like, I was just there... Can I get this food? Can I get this feeding tube out? And when can I get? I don't know. I think back on that, and I just know that I didn't even know what was going on. I knew I had a big scar. I knew they'd gone into my heart, and I didn't. I guess I just didn't really get all of it um, for quite a while. And the hardest part was being away from my daughter, because my daughter almost lost her boyfriend and her mom in the same hour in the same hour of the same day she almost she almost lost both of us so for me it was all about her and it was all about not being able to get home to her I just wanted to get home to her and I couldn't get clearance to fly the surgeon wouldn't give me clearance to fly so I had to um, spend two weeks at my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's house in Maryland which I couldn't have been in a better place but I live in Minneapolis I'm I'm 10 minutes away from the Minneapolis Heart Institute you know what I mean I'm 90 minutes from Mayo so if I could have just gotten on a train I mean I would have done anything to get home to my daughter but I, you know, I, I couldn't do it. They wouldn't let me do it. So I went to my in-laws and stayed with them. And it was, um, it was scary. You know, I missed my husband. I missed my family. I was gone for a total of a month before I got home, um, to my little family. And my in-laws live in this beautiful home in the country in Maryland. And they took really great care of me, but they worked all day. So I was home by myself. And it was so scary because everything, I thought everything was going to kill me. I was, I was afraid of everything. 
and I was afraid of being in the country because they felt like, well, what if, what if something happens? What am, is a pony going to come and save me? Who's going to get me out here? And where are they going to take me? And is the place they're going to take me going to be able to save me? Like, I just thought, I didn't believe that I was, I didn't believe I would live. I didn't think it was too much. It was too overwhelming. It was really lonely. Those days were really hard and really lonely. I had some friends visit me um, that live in Baltimore. It was about 40, they were about 45 minutes outside of Baltimore. And so I did have some really dear friends come and see me. So I, that happened three different times. And that was huge. That was a really big deal. One friend, one friend took me to Target, which, you know, Minnesota, it's like the home of Target. There's something about going to Target that makes you feel like your life is normal. So I just wanted to go to Target. And when I think back on it, I didn't really need anything. I mean, I guess I did it because I'd only packed for one night. I had no business going to Target two weeks after surgery. Like, none. And it was, I don't even know, I can't even believe I did it. It was really exhausting, and it was really stupid. And I was in one of those, like, little carts where you drive yourself around. You know, they plug them in. And I was just backing into stuff, <laughs> knocking things over. And anyway, lesson learned. Uh, but those visitors really helped me and you know, I had somebody there to walk You know ten minutes every day. I couldn't eat anything um, The pain meds weren't working. I didn't want to be on oxy So then they would give me other stuff, but the Tylenol of codeine made me sick and just nothing helped And I was just in pain and I just the pain wouldn't go away and there I was counting out my 13 or 14 pills every day which was super hard to do because I, I, everything made me want to throw up. And of course the idea of throwing up with, you know, my scar and my chest and every beat, you know, it's all so fresh. Um, that was really scary. You know, coughing is scary. It was a really long two weeks and they were so good to me and they took such good care of me when they were home. But at night, I, I climbed the stairs, and I was in this room, and I was alone, you know? I mean, when you have this, you're just alone. You're alone. You're just alone. And it's hard to explain unless you're one of us. People don't get it. They still don't get it. But the two weeks went by. And my husband came. I've never been so happy to see anybody in my life. Just to hug him, just to touch him and touch my home, you know. He came um, and we drove then two hours to my follow-up appointment. Met my cardiologist. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't seen him. Um, I had Googled him he, while well, I was still He was like the best surgeon in the country in 2015. And of course, I have a comic friend who was like, well, gosh, sorry, you got one that was kind of, you know, a couple of years down on the totem pole. Anyway, we thought that. I thought that was really funny. So I get to meet my surgeon. Um, so I had my chest, chest x-ray, and he came into the room, and I met him. I was able to thank him, you know, just look him in the eye and thank him for saving my life. Uh, I think he was in the room for, I'm not kidding you, like three minutes, four tops. I was just like really waited two weeks. Uh, and he had no, uh, it was like, and you know what? He's, I don't think that the guy with the knife should be the fun guy at the party. So that's okay that he wasn't like Mr. Personality. But it was just like, dude, what's your hurry? It's kind of a big deal for me. This might be, you know, not a big deal for you. It's a big deal for me. Um, but I did get to ask him some questions. I had brain surgery when I was pregnant with my son. So I have the scar. I think they probably do it now with a like titanium crown. But I have a dent in my head. Um, it wasn't an aneurysm. But there was something about it that 
was kind of like an aneurysm, I guess. Uh, it's our uh, arterial venous malformation. Uh, and it was like a 12-hour surgery. And I asked him if there was a connection between this and this. And uh, he said there is, but I don't know what it is because your head brain surgery wasn't an aneurysm. Interestingly enough, a very dear friend of mine who actually sat with my husband and my mom through that brain surgery all those years ago, 21 years ago, uh, Patty Peterson uh, is one of us. She dissected 12 years ago. And I remember bringing her a meal while she was recuperating. I know that she almost died, but I didn't understand what it was. I didn't know what it was. Um, I did ask the surgeon while I was still there if and what I had was anything like what had killed John Ritter. And he said, it's exactly what killed John Ritter. It's exactly what you have. Okay, well, Patty, uh, Patty's my go-to. She became my go-to. She got me out of the tree, I don't know how many times. And she continues to get me out of the tree. I, 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 I can't, I can, I don't even have words for how grateful I am to have her at here in, well, not here now, I'm in Denver, but in Minneapolis, 10 minutes away from me, uh, where I have somebody I can look in the eye that knows me and that has known me for so long, uh, that can help me and be there for me and be a support for me. And I can be that for her. Uh, it, it's, it's been one of my greatest gifts. And of course, meeting the other people that I've met at the symposium I went to, um, where we got to meet people in person, you know, Jeff and Karen and everybody. Um, but anyway, so Patty was helping me. She was talking with me. I think I did talk to her while I was still in Maryland. Uh, when I got back to Minneapolis, when I finally let go of my daughter, um, that was that's um, that was a big moment to get my hands on her. And then interestingly, we both, we couldn't stop talking about how excited we were to see each other. 15 minutes after, after I get home, she's like, well, mom, I'm just going to run to so, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay, honey, go ahead. Cause it was a normal, you know, all right, big drama, big, here comes mom. And then, you know, she's full on teenager, goes out and does her stuff. She's doing really well, by the way. Uh, anyway, so, <clears throat> Like I said before, I didn't really have a great understanding of what had happened to me. At, when I got home, I went to the John Ritter website and I read the entire thing. Like cover to cover, page to page, every inch of that website. And I completely melted down. Completely melted down. Like I, I was paralyzed by it. I was in my closet with the door closed, hysterical, on the phone with Patty. Just, oh my God, I had no idea that this is what I, I, I didn't understand that this was something I was going to manage for the rest of my, like I just didn't understand it. And honest to God, six months later, I feel like there are still moments where I learn something else and I don't really understand it. Um... But boy, after that symposium in Minneapolis a few weeks ago, I I cried all the way through that. And it was pretty clear um, that I had to figure out how to get a hold of my fear and how to stop projecting and how to really be in the moment. I'm farther ahead with that now. Uh, but, you know, as you know, it comes and it goes. And people that aren't us don't understand it. Patty, uh, Patty would FaceTime me to make sure she could look me in the eye uh, when she was talking to me so she could really see how I was. Just a godsend. Ugh. Just a godsend. Just amazing. And I, so I got home and I'm, now I'm home and it's great. 
I got my dog and I've got my family uh, and I feel really great and they all went back to their lives which is what they needed to do they needed to go back to their lives uh, but I was still just sitting there with one foot in the quicksand going hey hey guys I'm still over here um, and it was hard it's been that's been really hard um, I went to uh, Patty I was in so much pain I was in an argument with my primary about pain he wanted to send me to a, like a pain medication clinic I'm like no I don't I don't want to be an oxy just get me something that works and you can have all the oxy Patty sent me to a chiropractor uh, because she said you have a rib out and you know what that's what I had out so um, I've gone to a chiropractor I actually have a guy that's a friend of mine and he's put my my clavicle like back it was completely like uneven part of it was up here and part of it was down here um, and it's all still really crunchy but he has gotten that uh, back to where it's supposed to be and if it moves I go in for an adjustment and that's been super helpful all the appointments got really ridiculous like it was a full-time job everything was an appointment I'd have to go to the hospital to rehab and I'd have to go to a primary and then it was my cardiologist and oh yeah the ocular migraines let me go get my eyes checked and then go to the chiropractor again and then go back to the uh, the hospital and do the the rehab and um, it, it, it was overwhelming actually there was one week where I just said nope I'm done I'm not going to a single appointment it might have even done that for two weeks I was like I'm done with this I'm so over it what happened I'm 53 years old I feel like I'm 147 with all these appointments so it's hard to be at home um, and feel awful but look normal to everybody else you know like look like I was fine but I wasn't fine and I didn't feel fine and the story of everything is running through my head every single day and every single night and I can't stop running the story and I can't stop being afraid about if I'm going to see my kids get married to what what happened how did that happen how is it that I'm now somebody thinking that I might not be alive to see my kids get married anyway um, I went back to work not a lot I don't have a lot of gigs but I did on November 3rd uh, and it was great you know when I go and I perform I just get lost in my work and I just feel it's the thing that makes me feel like myself again I feel like I'm a normal like everybody else so um, I have some of that happening um, I've, I've booked my first keynote uh, so um, I'm writing that so that I can share my story and transition um, I'll, you know, from stand up to that, a little easier travel. But I mean, I work on cruise ships, did work on cruise ships. I was uh, scheduled originally uh, to be on a ship when I dissected, and I that schedule changed. And if I had been on that ship, I mean, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. You know, I can't help you in the middle of the ocean. Um, so, lucky. Lucky. Anyway, uh, that is, I think that's probably most of it. Not sure. I know now that six months later, I feel really good. You know, I feel like I like to take a nap. I need a nap. Um, but other than that, I think I feel pretty good. I just try to exercise every day and make sure my blood pressure is good and work on, you know, dropping the weight I have to drop um, and living my life. Not trying to be perfect, but also trying to just live my life because I hear a lot of people say that, you know? A lot of aortics like us just say, you know what, you gotta live your life. Even my cardiologist, you gotta live your life. So enjoy yourself and don't sit in it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying not to project and I'm trying to just be in the moment and have fun and it gets better it's getting better it's not all the time 
good days, bad days. This shit is not linear. But it, it's better. It's better. Okay. Thanks for listening to this. How long did I go? Ugh, what a windy girl. Um, that's my story. Stick to it. Bye, everybody.